Hey there chemists, we're going to take a moment and do a big reaction review. Uh, trying to summarize everything by functional group. We did this last semester and I'm going to start by reviewing all the ones we did and hopefully this will help give you a nice template of lots of resources you already have in one uh, easy to use spot. We'll start with how do you make an alkane? Alkanes you can think of as having some functional group that you can get rid of. For example, alkenes can be hydrogenated down to an alkane. You can certainly do this with an alkyne as well. You keep all your carbons. Uh, that's about it for orgo one. Although more, rec more recently, we can add some orgo two chemistry. We recently learned how to take ketones and aldehydes and completely get rid of the carbonyl. Uh, one example is the Wolf-Kishner reaction. That's hydrazine and excess base. And that's the key to any time you want to make an alkane. Imagine having a functional group that you get rid of, an unsaturation uh, or a carbonyl. So far, those are the ones we know. Moving on, let's look at alkenes. Alkenes mostly came from Orgo-1 as well. One of the first reactions we learned was to how to take halides. You could do an E2 with a strong base and make an alkene. Buried within that little summary is lots of information. Uh, is it Zaitsev or non-Zaitsev? That's based on the size of the base. Is it that the bromine and the H, that's beta, are anti to each other? That's really something that comes up in cyclic molecules. None of that matters in this example, but there's all those features that are still true because it's an E2 reaction. The other functional group we already learned last semester uh, and we've used a lot lately is the alcohol. You can do a dehydration on an alcohol with something like POCl3. And then also from Orgo 1, we learned how to take alkynes and turn them into alkenes. Uh, for example, you could do a Lindler reduction to make the cis alkene. Uh, alternatively, we could take the same alkyne and turn it into a trans alkene. Uh, if you're quizzing yourself, hopefully you get that's sodium metal and ammonia. That's all from Orgo 1. Let's add to this with what we've done in Orgo 2. Most recently, we've seen how you can take aldehydes and turn them into alkenes. This is done by homologating it, meaning making it bigger. Uh, most recently with the Wittig reaction. This involves that special phosphonium reagent, which is a triphenyl phosphonium, positively charged, attached to some carbon the carbon that becomes the new alkene carbon, and then whatever else is attached is along for the ride, in this case, an R group. And that's how you draw a Wittig reagent. So I could think of an alkene as formerly being an aldehyde. Let's move on to alkynes, more Orgo-1 chemistry. Alkynes often are made, uh, for our purposes, in two steps. Start with an alkene. You could do a halogenation to make the vicinal dihalide, and then do a double elimination that you'll get you to a terminal alkyne. Go back and fill in your reagents. This is bromine and then KOH, double E2. Alternatively, you could take that alkene and make it become an aldehyde. You actually lose a carbon and then you could put that carbon back on to make a terminal alkyne. That's with the Corey-Fuchs reaction. The reagents are a little bit more involved. It's triphenylphosphine and carbon tetrabromide, followed by a base. Uh, I'll just use KOH, followed by a source of acid, H+. And that's pretty much it for the hydrocarbons. There's plenty other out there, but those are the main ones we've seen in the level that this class goes to. Moving on to the halides, we can actually write out the first reaction we ever learned, radical halogenation, starting with an alkane. I can brominate the more substituted position. That's with elemental bromine and photochemistry, special form of light. You are almost guaranteed that if you start with an alkane, your first step in a synthesis is gonna be radical halogenation. This works really well for nice symmetric alkanes like cyclopentane then there's no competition about where the halogen goes. How else could I make a halogen? Uh, start with an alkene. You could use HBr, that'll get you the Markovnikov halide, or I could start with an alkene 
and use HBr with peroxide. Remember, that gives you the non-Markovnikov. Then, more recently, this was still in Orgo 1, but we'll put it on the list. Uh, you can take alcohols, things like secondary alcohols and primary alcohols will turn into halogens with phosphorus tribromide. If you've got a more substituted alcohol, like a tertiary, or anything that makes a good cation, uh, benzylic, allylic, you can make the more substituted halide using HBr. Next, uh, epoxides. Only one way for now. MCPBA. That'll get you to one new oxygen and your epoxide. Technically, there's another way. It would come from an acid base followed by an SN2 if you had a halohydrin. And then an equivalent of base. This will do an acid base SN2, and you will also get an epoxide. That's really just a way of making an ether. Now some newer stuff, carboxylic acids. From Orgo 1, we've seen and then reviewed it more recently. Oxidation of primary alcohols with chromium oxide and water, the Jones oxidation. Uh, we also saw oxidation of alkenes with KMnO4. Oxidative cleavage gives you carboxylic acids. And most recently, hydrolysis of any carboxylic acid derivative will give you a carboxylic acid. Then we get to the alcohols. This is where we sort of rounded out Orgo 1, and we can summarize a lot of them here. And I broke them up into primary, secondary, and tertiary because they're all a little different. Starting with primary alcohols and old chemistry, we can use alkenes to do a hydroboration. BH3, H2O2, and hydroxide give you a primary alcohol. Uh, we could also reduce aldehydes to get a primary alcohol. That's with sodium borohydride or LEH. They both work for that. And then other reactions involving uh, organometallics. We could use things like a Grignard, R, M, G, B, R, specifically with formaldehyde, a one carbon aldehyde followed by an acidic workup that would give you a new R group attached to a primary alcohol. And now let's get to uh, some more recent stuff, uh, carboxylic acid derivatives. How about an ester? An ester with a Grignard, I'll make it a different Grignard, R prime, MgBr, followed by a source of acid. That will get you to a primary alcohol. You'll actually also get, uh, whoops, excuse me, not a Grignard. That's coming later for more substituted alcohols. I meant to say LAH, lithium aluminum hydride. That'll get you to a primary alcohol. Grignards and esters is coming later. Let's throw one more in the mix here. It's a, it's a little older in our, in our chemistry. I'll squeeze it in at the bottom, why not? And it also comes from Grignards. Grignards can react with epoxides. Epoxides are great building blocks in organic chemistry. They add two carbons. And remember, organometallics act as bases that open up, uh, or sorry, they're basic, but in this case, they're nucleophiles and add to the epoxide um, and then open up the ring. And they give us two new carbons and a primary alcohol, an extra carbon away. So formaldehyde's a great way to add one carbon Epoxides are a great way to add two carbons, good synthetic tools. Now let's talk secondary alcohols. There's a lot of parallel with secondary alcohols. You can make them from alkenes as well. If I try a simple hydration reaction, uh, that's oxymercuration. Mercury in the presence of water, followed by sodium borohydride. Uh, we could also use a Grignard, R, MgBr. I can react that with some aldehyde, not formaldehyde, but an aldehyde. Here's acetaldehyde, a two carbon aldehyde, followed by an acidic workup. That would give me a new R group attached to, in this case, just a methyl. So the carbons of my aldehyde become those carbons of the alcohol and the R group gets attached. Uh, or I could start with a ketone. Do a reduction of a ketone with sodium borohydride 
that'll get you to a secondary alcohol. On to tertiary alcohols. Tertiary alcohols, I'm going to start with organometallics again, are MGBR. This time, instead of formaldehyde or an aldehyde, we could use a ketone. That would get us the three carbons of this initial ketone and a new R group directly attached. So that ketone became that piece, and the R group became that piece. Some older chemistry, you could obviously use an alkene. If it's appropriately substituted, we could do a hydration, either oxymercuration or just uh, acidic hydration. That would get you a tertiary alcohol in this case. And lastly, how about an ester, something from more recent chemistry. Esters react with Grignards. I'll make this R prime, MgBr, followed by acid. Uh, in this case, the ester gets attacked twice. Two equivalents of the Grignard get attached to what used to be the ester carbon. And then the other R group just becomes a free alcohol, ROH. So you actually get two alcohols when you attack an ester with a Grignard. So that's meant to be a semi-review of a lot of stuff we did in Orgo 1. Let's actually flip to the back now and talk about some newer reactions. Uh, esters. Esters can be made uh, in a variety of ways. Most recently, we've seen uh, acid chlorides reacting with alcohols. That'll make an ester. You could do a Fischer esterification from a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. That requires acid. And then just one more random one in there. We'll throw in the Bayer Villager oxidation. We saw this in our ketones unit. And what Bayer Villager does is it inserts an oxygen in between the carbon carbon bond next to the carbonyl. Uh, the reagent is a per acid, such as MCPBA. So no alkene to make an epoxide. Instead, we have a ketone that will make a uh, ester in this case. This just happens to be cyclic, so we get a lactone. How about ethers? Ethers are actually mostly orgo-1 chemistry. Uh, the main way to make an ether is the Williamson ether synthesis. That's with an alcohol. You do an acid-base reaction with sodium hydride, and then you do an SN2 with an alkyl halide. That would give me diethyl ether in that example. And then another way could be an alkoxy mercuration of an alkene. So in the presence of mercury, followed by an alcohol, and then a reduction, you'll make not OH attached to that carbon, but OR, which counts as an ether. Uh, organometallics. Organometallics are made from halides. So any alkyl bromide, react it with magnesium metal, gets you to the Grignard. We could do the same thing, but make a lithiate. For our purposes, Grignards and lithiates are essentially interchangeable. Uh, and then there's cuprates. Cuprates are the less reactive organometallic. They actually come from lithiates. You react them with a copper salt, something like copper cyanide, and you get two of the carbon groups attached to a, a cuprate, a copper anion, and it's balanced in charge with a lithium cation. Next, let's get to aldehydes. Starting with orgo-1 chemistry, we can oxidize primary alcohols with PCC or Swern. That will get you to an aldehyde. Uh, we can ozonize alkenes. That will also get us to an aldehyde. Uh, we can take a terminal alkyne and do hydrations on alkynes, disiamyl borane followed by base and peroxide will give you an aldehyde. You keep all of your carbons. Uh, and then one very useful recent one, virtually every carboxylic acid derivative, I'll just put an X there, can convert to an aldehyde using diisobutyl aluminum hydride, often called dibal. That's probably the one we're gonna see a lot in our upcoming synthesis problems because it starts with acid derivatives. Ketones, starting with orgo-1 chemistry, we can oxidize secondary alcohols. 
with things like PCC. Uh, we can make specifically a methyl ketone with one of my favorites, the Vacher oxidation. That involves uh, water and oxygen in the presence of palladium chloride and copper chloride, specific for a methyl ketone. Methyl ketones, meaning it's got to be a terminal alke alkene and have a methyl in the end. Uh, let's see, we can also make ketones from hydration of alkynes, things just like sulfuric acid in the presence of mercuric sulfate. We'll do this. And one more, you can always ozonize the appropriate alkene. If it's substituted correctly, you'll get a ketone. This one would obviously give you a formaldehyde as well. Now we get to some really new stuff, amine chemistry. Uh, amines can be made from imines via reductive amination. So if I have a ketone, a carbon-oxygen double bond, I can turn it into a carbon-nitrogen double bond with something on the nitrogen, let's say an R group. And then I can reduce that down to the amine, which is all single bonds on the nitrogen. How do you make the imine? Uh, you use an amine, so R. NH2, and you can just heat it up and it will lose water. And then you can reduce it with one of our newer reducing agents like sodium cyanoborohydride, that's NaBH3Cn. That reduces imines, but it doesn't touch the ketone. Uh, what else? We've got nitrile chemistry, specific for making primary amines, but hydrogenation of nitriles will give us primary amines. Uh, we've seen halides turn into amines. You can use the Staudinger reaction, sodium azid with triphenylphosphine and water will make a primary amine. Uh, notice in this case, you could imagine making this from a bromide. So I could start with a two carbon bromide and get an extra carbon. So this sort of looks like you add a carbon, whereas the Staudinger keeps the carbon count. And then one more, just to make it a little more random, we can make amines from amides. Uh, you can do the Hoffman rearrangement, which is bromine and base. That truncates your amine. You lose a carbon. We completely lose the carbon. Uh, alternatively, you could take an amide and reduce it with LAH. That would actually also give you an amine, but it would keep your carbon count. So I'll throw one minute more in here with LAH, then you keep your carbon count and just get a, an amine in the end. Lastly, just some benzene reactions, just to throw in when we see aromatic things. Uh, substituted benzenes can come from benzene, things like halogenations. So you can brominate a benzene. You need a Lewis acid like ferric bromide, but that would substitute one of the H's with a halogen. Uh, or if you want to attach carbon groups, you could do a friedel crafts alkylation. It's got to be something that came from a good carbocation, so I'll use allyl chloride. It's a nice example because then I have a functional group that I can react. Or we could do friedel crafts acylation. That's using an acid chloride. And then you get a ketone directly attached to the benzene ring. So that's just a summary of some of the reactions, but now hopefully you have a nice template uh, with a variety of functional groups that all make you think back to some pre-existing functional group. It'll be very useful as we embark on some synthesis problems.